is a tutorial on how to utilize PowerSchool's student and parent portal. You will go to powerschool.westside66.org to access the portal. You will enter in your username and password. If you do not know your username and or password, email powerschool.support at westside66.net and we'll be happy to assist you. Once logged in on the blue bar, for students, you will only see your information, but for parents, you will see one or more students' names up at the top. If you are missing a student because they're new to the district, or maybe you have an incoming kindergartner that needs to be added to your account, just email powerschool.support at westside66.net and we will get them added. So we're going to look over here at Patrick and I'm going to walk through the different pages and what they all uh, contain. So looking at the grades and attendance page, it will show you your student's class schedule. And I'll show you kind of what that looks like for different grades. So this is what an elementary student would look like a high school student, and I have Patrick as a middle school. So I have him just enrolled in one class, and I kind of want to talk through anything that is in blue is a hyperlink. So it can be clicked and more information will show up. So when I click on the D60, it's going to pull up the details of the scores he is earning in that class and the assignments. Up in this box up here, what you most likely will see, and I'm going to just skim over here to my printed handout. Most teachers will have a section description. Since the year is just beginning, this class happens to not have anything quite yet. Under the assignments, the teacher has created three various assignments with the due dates. And under the flags, you're going to start to notice different icons. And down here, what do those icons mean? So the clock means that it was turned in late. A little asterisk in the yellow, or excuse me, orange circle means the assignment is missing. And a check mark means it was collected. And the blue half filled circle means that it was an incomplete assignment. When you see the little bubble for speaking, you know that there is something, a comment, and you come over here to the view and you can then read the comment. Email teacher for additional information. You can also click on the tab that says assignment description and it might give you more information about what that actual assignment uh, pertained. If you do not see the view, for example, up here on the very first box, that just means that the teacher did not include any additional information. Down here you will always see when were the grades last updated. Okay, moving on, missing assignments will list, so for example, if you saw over here, Patrick did have the missing assignment as triggered by the icon. So looking at the missing assignments, it is there listed for you. Grade history, Patrick is new, so unfortunately he doesn't have any grade history but if I show you what that looks like over here, if your student was with us prior to this school year, you can click back to the different years that they were here and see what classes they were enrolled in, what their grades were, percentage, if there were credit hours connected to it, those sorts of things. Attendance history will show you day by day what the student's attendance was. And there is also a legend uh, down at the bottom. 
where it'll show you what the different codes mean. And here's an example of what one might look like completely filled out. A is for absent, T is for tardies, E for excused absence, D is for sick, etc. Email notification. This is for you to set up what email address is linked to your account, but also if you would like to receive summaries of current grades and attendance, showing assignment scores for each class, a report of attendance, school announcements, balance alerts. If you want those sorts of emails sent to another email address, you can add it in the box. How frequently do you want those to come? And you want these settings to apply to all students you're linked to or just to Patrick and do you want it to send now? And you would submit any changes to that that you want. Okay, teacher comments. If a teacher was to enter a comment specifically for a student on a particular class, this is what it might look like. And there's the icon that it goes to. School bulletin. Throughout the year, the school was put out notifications, maybe of clubs, maybe of the lunch menu. So the school bulletin is always a great thing to look at. And then you just X out to close it. I'm going to skip over class registration because that does not pertain to the, right now. It's something that the 6th and 7th graders will use in the spring. So I'm going to jump down here to balance. If your student has been assessed a fee from the school, either for maybe a late book or a parking ticket fee or as you can see for here, Patrick is participating in the Cooperative Loss Program for this school year. So there is a $20, excuse me, a $50 fee. And I can click on the Pay Now to pay that through my school box. And I'm going to do that as a different tutorial. You can also click on My School Box and it will actually take you to the My School Box website. And again, I'm going to do a different tutorial for that. If you want to click on my schedule, it's going to show that Patrick's schedule is a uh, third period on B days is when he has business and technology. I can show you a better example of a week's view of classes and then a matrix view. This will look different for middle school versus high school versus elementary. High school because they do the modular scheduling this strictly is a list of the classes that they are taking. It is not a this is what they're taking on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, all of that. Middle school, it's straight through exactly the way it is in power school. Elementary, again, it's just going to be a list of the classes. It's not going to be at 9 a.m. they're in this class, at 2 p.m. they're in this class. School information. You will be able to see the school's address, main phone number, fax number, there might be occasionally additional information, for example, the principal's name, vice principal, okay, account preferences. Again, this is kind of what you would set up your usernames and passwords and change them that you would like. And then it also shows you which students you have linked to your account. Again, you can try to add them yourself, but you would need additional information from us. So it's just easiest to email powerschool.support 
at westside66.net and we will take care of it for you. And for any of you that are returning to Westside this year, you've probably received numerous emails about completing the returning student registration and this is the icon that you are clicking on to access that information. It does take you to a different website. You then enter the date of birth of the student that you're completing it for and you continue through the pages until you get to a submission confirmation page. Clicking back here to PowerSchool. PowerSchool does have a, have a mobile app that you can download and what you would need to have is the district code which is MJJN and once you have that you're able to use the same username and password that you're using to access uh, the PowerSchool portal. One additional thing that I did want to make note of on the grade history page we now have added student number. This student number is very helpful for the secondary students to know because it helps them with printing stuff when they're at school but also parents it's very helpful for you to know because if your student is not linked to your My School Books account or you need that information, it's right there available for you. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at powerschool.support at westside66.net. Have a great day.